Istanbul, Turkey, one of the largest cities in the world with a staggering population of nearly 16 million. Istanbul is a place where history, culture, and resilience intertwine. A city where Asia meets Europe both physically and culturally, and this place is a living testament to that. With its diverse landscapes and centuries of history, Istanbul has weathered wars, revolutions, and in today's day and age, emerged as a land shaped by resilience. The vibrant city and nation reflects a melting pot of cultures, blending ancient traditions with modern life, and minarets along with skyscrapers stand side by side. Above all, the Turkish spirit stands resilient with warmth, hospitality, and an unwavering unity exemplifying a culture like no other. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be sharing with you the top 10 best things you can do when you're in the city of Istanbul. And before we hop into the video, I just want to mention that these lists of things to do are not in any specific order from best to worst. So make sure you watch until the end so you don't miss out on any of these amazing things to do here in Turkey. Number one on the list is to delve into the vibrant Istiklal and Taksim Square. This 1.5 kilometer street is a pedestrian paradise. Now I'm getting the hype for Taksim Square at night. I mean, look at this place. There are thousands of people everywhere. You know, look at that guy's right here. Only in Istanbul. Let's go. <laughs> hey, what's up, brother? How we doing? Hi, baby. A bustling hub offering an array of shops, historical gems, and century old eateries. Right down here is where we have all the food options. Let me tell you this. There are massive, massive, massive kebab meat rotators. I don't know the official name for them, but I can smell them. I'll tell you that. The perfect pizza would be half kebab, half pepperoni pizza. Maybe toss a little bit of the chicken on there, and then you got the ultimate delish entree. So, guys, for an entire meal, three people do. That's only three forty-eight. So that comes out to like twenty-two U.S. dollars, guys, to have three entrees. Got a couple beverages in there as well. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You can find absolutely everything here, creating an atmosphere filled with so much energy. Number two on the list is to visit the famous Galata Tower, a cylindrical shaped monument standing tall in the heart of the city that is a historical gem offering breathtaking panoramic views of Istanbul when you get to the very top. Dating back to the 14th century, it's a testament to the city's historic skyline and despite the crowds, the views are truly unrivaled. There are a lot of tales around the Galata Tower, my favorite one would be the one where if you go in with the person you love to the top of the tower, you will both be destined to marry. So make sure you bring someone special. Number three on the list is to visit the grandeur of Topkapi Palace, once the primary residence for the Ottoman Sultans. The Sultans lived here from 1465 to 1853, and the reason why this is such a beautiful place is because it's perched on the highest hill. It not only showcases opulent Ottoman history, but also treats visitors to awe-inspiring views of the Bosphorus Strait. It's an immersion into rich and luxurious Ottoman culture. A tip when planning your city tour is that it's conveniently close to the Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque, so you can do all three at once in one afternoon. Number four on the list is to explore Ortakoy and the Bosphorus. Look at this part of Istanbul. It's like, this is just the type of city you just never know what you're gonna find when you keep walking. We were just in like this super bougie area. Now we've got some markets like fitting right into here. A, looks like a clothing shop with, I don't know, maybe apartments above it, just lit up with that red lighting. Just a uh, super unique. In this area, you will find pretty much anything you can imagine from shops and souvenir stands to multinational cuisines and of course, Turkish ice cream. I need to grab this thing. Oh, oh I almost got that thing. Whoa, 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 I got it on my arm. Oh, <laughs> I got it. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, Guys, I don't even know what's going on here. Holy crap. Wow. Wow, this is impossible to get this ice cream right now. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yuppa. Oh, okay. he's got it. Oh. Yuppa. Oh. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. There we go. Yeah. We got that. Okay. That. That right there, my friends, is what you have to do to earn your ice cream. And two places to highlight here are the Ortakoy Mosque, which stands with serene beauty. And the second is the Bosphorus Bridge, connecting the two continents, Europe and Asia. And based on all the people up there, Seems like that's where the ideal photo spot is. Oh, interesting. I guess right at the top of this bridge is also a uh, subway stop or a metro stop. 
Number five on the list is to take a stroll around the Emenonu area, which includes the Spice Bazaar, Galata Bridge, and the Grand Bazaar. So first up, walking through the Spice Bazaar is a must. They've got all types of sweets. As I'm walking through here, there are literally smells of so many different types of things. Spices, sweets. I don't even know, some smells that I've never smelled before. And it is busy. Look at how busy it is down here. Oh yeah, just look at this. It's literally never ending with stuff to get. Next is to make a stop over at the renowned Galata Bridge where locals gather to fish, but most notably for you, you can enjoy a mesmerizing sunset overlooking Istanbul from here. What a place to be in. This is where you get that European feel and then you get that Middle Eastern feel mixed. Last but not least in this area, experience the Grand Bazaar with its thousands of shops and nearly 250,000 to 400,000 daily visitors. There are literally so many areas. I don't even know which way to turn half the time. I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna take a left, take a right here and see where we end up. Surprisingly though, not too many salespeople that are like trying to pull you into their stores. I figured there'd be more of them. I get why it's called the Grand Bazaar. It's literally so massive. It's crazy how big this thing is. I've probably been in here for like an over an hour and still I'm like just figuring out my way around here. I'd use Google Maps. I do like the uh, outside of the bazaar a little bit more because you get more of that fresh air coming in and out, which is nice because it was pretty warm inside the bazaar. But this is like electric. Oh, it's electric. We can print photo and we can write name. And if I if I already have a photo, can you put it on? Of course. It's crazy how that thing works. It literally just takes it all off there. Probably like two minutes. Sent it there, got it uploaded, and then this machine just goes ahead and like does it all in about, I don't know, 90 seconds or so. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh my god, look at that. That is incredible. Look at how fast that is going. Whoa. Number six on the list is to discover the two iconic mosques, the stunning blue mosque, or as locals call it, Sultan Ahmed. Don't forget to take your shoes off when you're entering. Wow. Can you explain what this is? These look like graves, I think. Graves, yeah. We just spoke to uh, a nice lady outside who explained to us what those coffins were for, and it was basically there was 19 people that were killed by the Sultan. Um, back when uh, this guy had taken power. So that is the mosque we're gonna go to last. We went to actually the tomb side of the mosque and the main blue mosque over there is what we're gonna walk over to now. Since there's so much construction going on, it's hard to see everything, but you can see how tall the ceiling of the dome is. The dome's restoration has been complete. So I guess first step was to restore the dome and then now they must be doing the uh, lower levels. So there's probably not too much more I'll show you in here guys because obviously the restorations. This like whole complex here is so impressive. Like everything is designed, I mean, like to just such a, a beautiful extent. You got these mosaic tiles right here. Food stands in the distance here. Just a great place to stroll around and uh, you know, taking this part of Istanbul. And Hagia Sophia, also known as Hagia Sophia. As you can see, it is massive. So what I'm being told here, I guess this is a debatable topic. I'm not saying I agree or disagree. This is just what I was just told here, that um, it was a once a mosque, then it was turned into a church, and then now recently, in the last couple of months, it was reopened as a mosque where you can go in. You can see how much older this structure is than the other mosque we were just in the Blue Mosque. This one here is dating back so many more hundreds of years later, although it seems like some of it's newer architecture. But look at how crazy big this is. Chandeliers hanging up this way. Look at how massive this is. That's gotta be like 50 plus meters up. So as this was a church for a period of time, I guess right up there used to be uh, paintings from the church. And so since it's been converted a few times, and look at that, you can still see the crosses. As you walk around this place, you can just feel how massive it is. I mean, we've been walking around for a few minutes now. These two architectural wonders define Istanbul's skyline and are more than just landmarks. They're living pieces of history. Number seven on the list is to take a trip to Prince's Islands. After traveling through the hustle and bustle of this city, it's time to take a break from all of this buzz. Before we get to Prince's Island, we gotta stop at Katakoi, catch another ferry, another 45 to 50 minutes, and then we'll be on Princess Island. And unloading to reload. Good news, we have located Princess Island. You guys, so over here on this side of the boat, We've even got a cafe, and there's a lot of seating all here. Oh, ceviches, you guys like ceviches? Lots of beaches to just cruise on up to. Where we're at right now is on one of four Princess Islands. 
but we're up there. We're gonna be going all the way down to this one right there. Ocean breeze, views of the coastline of Istanbul right now. This really shows you like how massive this city is. It just spreads and keeps going and going and going and going. For 33 cents to get us all the way over here, can't complain. So let's get off this boat and see what this island has to offer. As we say, Princess Island, it's been a while. Somewhere around here, we're gonna be able to find bikes. Four dollars per person to be able to uh, rent bikes for the entire day. Or so. All right, here we go. Like you can adjust the speed. We're going up a little bit of a hill, so we're definitely gonna get a solid amount of exercise here. That's a nice bike ride around this area, though. Just such a cool design for the houses around here. We got swings, hammocks, a phone booth there, flowers. 12 lira to get in, which is just under a dollar, probably like 70, 80 cents. Yeah, guys, this is the spot if you want to come and have a picnic. They got tables with these views, like such picturesque views. So, guys, we made it a little bit further into the park here. Look, just look at how beautiful this is. You have these restaurants right along the uh, water here. Yeah, let me tell you this. I should have worn my shorts today. That's on me. Back on the bikes here. We're getting the electric scooter next time. That's for sure what we should have done. 200 lira per hour for the electric bikes, whereas we paid 40, 60 for the whole day? Yeah, 60 for the whole day for the uh, mountain bikes. But like, this is a hilly island. When we thought we were going to be uh, biking around, we probably expected it to be a bit more flatland. But you got to be conditioned. I mean, look at we have these guys right here just walking their bikes up. You can't blame them either. Hello, brother. Hello. Hello. Make sure to plan your day so that you can enjoy the breathtaking sunset over the Marmara Sea. It's truly a chilled out mini paradise, making it a perfect day trip from Istanbul. Or you can even turn it into a weekend trip and stay for a night or two. Number eight on the list is to experience two continents in one day. How you are going to do this is you are going to board a ferry from Galata Port, which is the starting point for these iconic ferry journeys. There's a lot of restaurants, just uh, you know, so pedestrian friendly. Like I've said a few times in a couple other videos here, you can just walk everywhere with ease, get food, go and do so many different types of activities, get from one side of the city to the other. After you've explored the Galata Port, it's time for you to hop on board the ferry, which will take you from one continent to another gonna be insane i don't yeah. think i've ever crossed a border by boat like yeah. a continental border and we're practically teleporting there you know? yeah yeah like, literally 20 minutes and you're there literally yeah, exactly. so you can take a quick nap and like you wake up oh my god you're on the other side of the exactly all right guys so it looks like we got our man bringing us some chai here yeah three of them and this is what we call a picturesque view of istanbul we have left left the port here about a minute and a half ago and as you can see, the ferry's pretty quick and in every single direction. I mean, we've got boats, vessels going all across the Bosphorus River here. As you guys can see, this side coming into the Asian side, it's uh, quite a bit of a, a port city over here. We've got a lot of massive like cargo ships. But honestly, just riding in here, you can already feel a bit more of an industrial feel than on the European side where we just came in. So to get a tea on there, 33 cents. Actually, that was the same price as the boat ride. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's actually kind of crazy when you think about it. It is a must do, especially around sunset or in the evening as you'll get to see the entire city lit up. Number nine on the list is to taste some of the country's culture. And what better way than to try out the famous Turkish breakfast? You will quickly realize it is an absolute feast for your taste buds. Look at that, eggs and tomatoes, super stringy cheese. I mean, look at that. I've lifted it that high in there and it's all over the table. We're gonna just toss that right on top, get some of that cheese that's, wow, look at that. It's got a mind of its own. Holy, whoa. Yeah, there we go. One must indulge in a spread of cheeses, olives, fresh bread, and an assortment of jams. Holy crap, that is so good. Later on in the day, when you get hungry, you're going to find out there's a seemingly infinite amount of delicious items to try. Guys, I guess we didn't we didn't actually realize how much food we were getting. Yes. <laughs> I better hop on the donut train here before uh, I fill up too quickly. More food coming out here. That's fresh out of the oven there too. But a couple of my personal favorites I'll mention today that you'll have to try while you're in Istanbul are the Turkish pide which is a soft and chewy flatbread cheese potato meat perfect chicken cheese chicken cheese right down there meat cheese meat cheese mix yeah cheese meat egg oh for me i usually get a pepperoni style of meat along with cheese and that hits the taste buds quite perfectly oh my god that is so delicious chewy cheesy another one of my favorites is the boric which is a flaky pastry baked until golden brown filled with cheese and other fillings cheese is stuck to my arm 
After which, you'll have to sip on some Turkish coffee or Turkish tea for a kickstart to your day. So guys, for that entire meal, all of that food, honestly, our eyes were much bigger than our stomachs here. It was delicious, but we're gonna take some of this with us so we can eat it later. And that was 440 Turkish lira, which is about 26 dollars, or just about 27 US dollars for us to have this massive breakfast. Right, thank Perfect. You thank you so much. Yum, yum, yum. I'm getting so hungry now. I think we gotta change to the last and final things to do before I get too hungry. And finally, last but not least on the list is number 10, which is to immerse yourself in the rejuvenating tradition of a Turkish bath or more locally known as a hammam. This is where centuries old practices and modern relaxation techniques come together. Oh yeah, this looks like a vibe. Basically uh, started out with the sauna. That got me uh, my body temperature up. And then after that went into the hammam. I uh, had water, basically really warm water poured all over my body. And uh, after that used like, almost like a light scrubber that takes off like the solid top layer of dead skin. One thing I will note is some of the Turkish baths can scrub you pretty hard, so be ready for that and make sure you select your Turkish bath wisely. And so guys, that's where we're going to go ahead and end today's video. That was just a short list of 10 things to do in Istanbul. Obviously, with how large of a city it is, there are so many more things you can do. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a few additional things down in the description below that you can book directly. And I'm wishing you guys an amazing trip exploring Turkey. And one last thing I want to mention, if you guys want to check out my clothing brand that i'm launching here soon it is called wear perception i have some incredible items launching soon so check out the link in the description below for that thank you guys so much we'll see you in the next video